as president of 100 Black Men of New Jersey, I'm honored and privileged to be able to honor uh, distinguished gentlemen, uh, some of which who are in our chapter already, and some of which who you know, will soon to wear the brand as a new member of our chapter, uh, Dr. Joseph Youngblood and Mr. John E. Harmon. Um, the significance of why they were awarded. Um, the Legacy Rising Star Award that Dr. Youngblood received is critical. In my view, it is the passing of the torch of leadership that's, that's joining this organization. All of us, every member of this organization is already a proven leader in his or her community, work, uh, and all of their uh, civil, uh, civic and family endeavors. It's proven, that's how you get to be and wear the brand and walk with the other successful, distinguished guys. The Rising Star Award in particular is for the member who's had the most significant, quantifiable, verifiable impact on our organization within their first year of joining us. Um, like no other rising star that we've had previously, Dr. Youngblood exemplifies someone who will come in immediately, waste no time making an assessment, and rolling up his sleeves like the rest of us and getting the job done. Uh, so, you know, happy to have him serve as our Vice President of Programmatic Initiatives. All of the educational endeavors, all of our four for the future, um, uh, mentoring, education, health and wellness, and economic development, you know, he is a key fixture in all of our new way of creating our sustainable change that we're looking to create for all of our programmatic initiatives. He is a critical, critical leader within this organization, and without a doubt, he is our rising star for 2010. John Harmon I've known for quite some time, and it's critical, particularly in our communities, that we begin to focus more, you know, along with the mentoring, along with the education, on building the bridges, particularly of infrastructure and business. John, for well over a decade, has been leading that charge as a pioneer, um, and as a banker, I critically know the value and need of having economic infrastructure, uh, both in terms of information, access to capital, as well as networking, so that as our community, we can thrive. You know, it's, it's, it's extremely critical that we're able to create jobs, uh, that we uh, support entrepreneurship, that we truly become stakeholders in the business aspects of life. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trained and I'm very old school. You follow the politics and you follow the money and you always end up in the right place or at least around the right place. So if we are going to be, and we're already known to be a foremost organization from a mentoring standpoint, we're launching our educational initiatives through our 100 Legacy Academy charter schools, then we already have a considerable track record for village family gatherings and doing screenings and healthcare information throughout the state. The next phase and next focus for our organization is to really bring our economic development agenda online. We cannot do that without working with John Harmon and what he's been doing pioneering for the last 10 years. So with, for, from, with, from my perspective, honoring our rising star, Dr. Youngblood, is, 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 is actually clear. You know, his acumen, his experience, his track record in terms of launching our 100 legacy uh, charter schools uh, was absolutely critical to have this caliber of intellect, skill, uh, and resource within the chapter as he uh, helps us uh, fully understand from a quantifiable and from a research empirically based data driven way, not anecdotal, that we understand what's really going on with our young people in schools and really do something and have an action plan that you don't just talk about, that you set and do. We can only do this endeavor when you've got resources like Dr. Youngblood. And John Harmon, you know, we are in the early stages of our conversations, but we are on the same page. Absolutely. You know, we critically know um, that, you know, again, for me, life is economics. Everything that we do, we need to have the right economic framework, the right deal structure, the right resources. So we're truly going to change the game. Uh, it's a lofty endeavor. We may not get there tomorrow, but we will build the bridges so that our communities over time thrive and achieve sustainability economically. That will be a critical feat when we can really make a true impact on jobs, families, community through economics. And that's the work that John and I have before us working with uh, <coughs> Dr. Youngblood and the rest of the board and membership of the 100. It's 
we will have a laser-like focus on an economic agenda and a policy initiative. And that's when having an internal think tank so that you can really frame out what are your priorities in education, what are your priorities in mentoring, what are your priorities from a policy and legislative initiative to truly impact health care and economic development. At the end of the day, we have to know what game we want to play. We have to be in the game if we do want to play. And if we are going to win, you've got to bring all the necessary resources and partners to the table and focus them all on a singular goal and singular mission. And that is really the mission of the 100, to uplift and advance our community from a social, economic perspective and have some fun and foster brotherhood in the process. He's been known to be the man. <laughs> George Jones, member of 100 Black Men for over 20 years, um, re recipient of Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, just speaks to the many years, uh, 40 or so, that our business has been in, uh, in existence, uh, perseverance, uh, and never say there's an excuse for why we didn't succeed, because we always endeavor to succeed. Being with the organization for these many years, uh, it's been through the highs and the lows, and now we're on the way up again. Uh, looking forward to many more prosperous years with the organization. Will Mingo, co-chair for the 2010 to 2011 Gala event. A uh, member for just over a decade. It's been a, a great event. It's uh, been an honor to you know uh, see some uh, some of our members be recognized for some of their achievements, a la uh, George Jones this year for all of his accomplishments in business over the past three, four decades. Uh, it's just been an outstanding event, and uh, looking forward to many more to come. My name is Joseph Youngblood, and I'm Vice President for Programmatic Initiatives for the 100 Black Men of New Jersey. Uh, and this has been a most auspicious event uh, where we've celebrated three people who've made tremendous contributions to the organization and to the African American community in the state of New Jersey. Uh, in my role and capacity as Vice President of the 100, uh, I oversee all of the various programmatic initiatives, uh, community service projects, and related events that we've been engaged in, the latest of which is the creation of our legacy charter school. Uh, that will be a joint residency charter school for Irvington Township and the city of Newark, uh, scheduled to open in the fall of 2011. Uh, for 2011 and beyond, our strategic focus is really around uh, education, uh, using the uh, charter school as our opportunity to really engage the broader community around the other four areas that are also really important to the 100 economic development, uh, also looking at uh, mentoring and continuing the role that we play in the lives of young black men across the state, uh, and again anchoring that uh, in the work that we'll be doing in Essex County with our charter school, uh, and then also focusing on uh, elements of health and wellness as well, uh, with a particular emphasis on the uh, chronic illnesses and diseases that impact African American males. I'm John Harmon, President and CEO of the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey, and clearly I was humbled by the award this evening. It's, it's, it's just phenomenal when you're recognized by your peers. Um, as President and CEO of the African American Chamber of Commerce, on a daily basis we, we strive to connect the African American business community with the economic mainstream of the state of New Jersey to not only strengthen them, but sustain the communities wherein their businesses are domiciled. There are over 60,000 African American businesses here in the state of New Jersey. One of our most important challenges is to increase the number of, uh, reduce the number of sole proprietorships of that number, about 94% of them are sole proprietors. So in essence, we have to get more of our consumer spending dollars to impact those businesses in a way in which they um, hire more people from their communities and ultimately sustain their, their existence. Next year we have our 100 Legacy Academy which will be opening up in Newark, New Jersey in the fall. Uh, the first of you know, our plan three to four charter schools in the state of New Jersey also uh, kicking off our, a number of new mentoring programs across the state and expanding in southern and central 